For our second law of exponents, we're going to consider this sort of pattern. When we take something like x, uh, x cubed and then we square it. So this is something raised to an exponent and we're raising it to an exponent again. Well, um, if I square something, I know that that's just it multiplied by itself. So x cubed squared is just x cubed times x cubed. And I could put these in parentheses, but again, those parentheses aren't really doing anything because exponents are going to happen before the, um, before the multiplication anyway. Now, using that property that we just saw um, right before this in this previous video, we know that we can add the 3 and the 3 together to get 6. So looking at this, how would we go from the, two and the 3 and the 2 to get to the 6? Well, that's a multiplication. And in general, that actually does work. Um, if I had something like uh, t to the 4th to the 7th, then I would have t to the 4th times t to the 4th times t to the 4th, and I'd end up with 7 copies. And I'd be adding seven, uh, t to the 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus and so on, and there would be 7 copies. Which adding t to itself four, uh, 7 times is the same as 4 times 7, which of course would be 28. So in general, if we have something like a to the r, and then we raise it to the s, this is just the same as taking r times s. All right, so uh, looking at a couple of examples. Um, this one right here, it feels a little silly to use a law of, of exponents when we could just evaluate this out. So I'm going to look at this two different ways. I'm going to just evaluate it out. I'm going to say, well, 2 to the 4th, four, to the fourth, so I'm just following the order of operations here. Uh, 2 to the 4th is 16. Um, so we get 16 squared, and of course 16 squared is, well, I guess I need to ask my calculator. 16 squared is 256. All right, so this better be the same as if I had followed this, this uh, law of exponents. 4 times 2 is 8, so this, is, this should be 2 to the 8th also. Let's check to see if that's the same number. 2 to the 8th. Uh, if we're doing just generic exponents on the calcu on this calculator, you can do it with this button. Um, we get 256. So that's that's good to see. Um, we would expect that those should be the same. It doesn't matter how we're evaluating it out. We should always get the same number. All right. Uh, if we have z to the fifth and we're raising that to the third power, well, five times three is fifteen. This would be z to the fifteenth. And here, uh, this one's, well n cubed, and then raising that to the, the fifth power. This would be uh, the opposite of n, rather. Um, 3 times 5 is 15. Now, when you're looking at something like this, this is, um, we have a, an opposite of a number. You could look at this as this negative occurring 15 separate times. I know that it's inside parentheses because this was inside parentheses here. I'm just counting this as my, my thing that I'm raising to the power. Um, and so that's um, that's what I've written here. But I can actually get rid of, I can simplify this a little bit more, I can get rid of those parentheses by saying this negative would occur 15 times, and that's an odd number. So we would end up having one left over at the very end. This would be the same as the opposite of n to the 15th. Let's uh, consider what would happen if this was something like the opposite of n cubed and then raised to the fourth power. See how this would change. Um, well, this one would be the opposite of n to the, well, 3 times 4 is 12. When I take and I, I repeat that negative out 12 times, 12 is an even number, and those negatives would all cancel each other out. This would just be n to the 12th. So you can see this does, it does end up being a little bit different with those negatives in there. Um, if we have an odd number for our power or an even number for our power.